Well, hello, Internet, and welcome to part four of my financial statements tutorial. This is the final tutorial. If you didn't watch one, two, or three, there are links to them on the screen. You should definitely watch them, otherwise you're going to be completely confused. Here specifically, I'm going to go over how your books or financial statements are going to change when the cost of your inventory changes as well as first in, first out, last in, first out, the cash flow statement, which is the only financial statement we have not covered so far, fixed assets and how they affect your balance sheet, and depreciation. So let's say the price of your paper goes from $35 to $40 for the same 50 sheets you previously were purchasing. Let's also say you have $150 in inventory at the previous prices. How do you decide which inventory to use next, and how does that affect your financial statements? Well, there's two ways of handling inventory changes such as this. You can either handle that inventory as a first in, first out, which is easier to keep track of because you can quickly get rid of your old inventory, and also provides tax benefits if your inventory is generally falling in price. And if you want an example of an industry where this occurs, that would be the technology industry where microchips are constantly falling in price. Or you can handle this inventory change with last in, first out. This is harder to keep track of because you more than likely are going to continue purchasing that inventory. And you're going to have inventory sitting around that you purchased at a lower price, meaning the $35 as we mentioned before. However, last in, first out provides tax benefits if your inventory is generally rising in price. And this is most businesses. So just remember, first in, first out, that means you're going to get rid of your cheap $35 paper first and then move on to the $40 paper. Last in, first out, you're going to get rid of the new paper at $40 you purchased first and then eventually get to the $35 paper. So that's the differences in regards to how you can handle this inventory change. And you can see here, I gave an example of first in, first out, selling 300 caricatures. Remember, we had 150 in inventory left over previously, and here I purchased enough paper and markers to make the 300 caricatures, which I'm demonstrating here. And you can see that you would use last in, first out in this situation to lower your overall tax basis. So we have 150 in inventory. We bought $300 additional in inventory. And here we're going to be selling the 150 from here and then 150 from here, which is going to leave an additional ending inventory of $165 because of the pricing changes. And our total cost of goods sold is going to be $315 because we are only going to leave behind the more expensive inventory here, and we're going to be using the cheaper inventory first. That means that your overall gross profit is going to be larger with first in, first out than it is over here with last in, first out. And you can see here, here's the $150 in inventory, in ending inventory, the least expensive inventory, and that came from up here because we did not use it. And if we take out the same amount for rent, you can see right here, now this is a small purchase, small money sort of situation, but you can see if you were spending hundreds of thousands of dollars, how this discrepancy or this change in overall net profit that would be created here would grow quite large. So again, what we're doing with last in first out is we're making our net profit or our earnings look smaller. But as I mentioned in the previous tutorial, eventually that catches up to the company. So that's the difference between first in first out. And you can see here, again, I'm going to go very specifically through a first in, first out financial statement. Over here, we have our income statement. Over here, we have our balance sheet. So how did we calculate cash in this situation? Well, we took our previous cash amount, which was $490. We took out our raw materials, which was $330 that we purchased. Take out our rent, and then we add back in our net profit, which comes from the income statement right here. And that gives us our final cash amount of $865 and our remaining raw materials of $165, which we take from ending inventory. So that's how you move things from the income statement over to a balance sheet. We can also see here how raw materials were affected. Remember, we had 150 in raw materials. We purchased $330 of additional raw materials. And we subtract out costs of goods sold to get our final raw material amount. Or you could just pull this off of ending inventory and slap that in right there. And finally, earnings week to date was found by subtracting out our rent, adding in our net profit, 945, which came from right here, and our cost of goods sold, which comes from right here. And that is how you get the $390 in earnings week ending for a first in, first out financial statement, meaning an income statement and a balance sheet. When you add all these up, of course, this is a balance sheet, so everything balances.
Then you have last in, first out. Here again, same sort of process. We're just pulling the information from the income statement over to the balance sheet, and this is how we're able to keep our earnings straight. Remember, most of the mistakes made by people who are just starting in accounting is in earnings week ending. That's why we use the income statement. Again, previous cash, $490. Raw materials, $330, which we get right here from our cost of goods sold, minus our rent plus our net profit, $930. That's how we get our final cash amount. Then you have raw materials, $150. Again, you can just pull this $150 right here from ending inventory and slap that in there. But this is how it's calculated right here. And RM means raw materials, and COGS means cost of goods sold. And then again, you create earnings week ending by subtracting out rent, adding in net profit from down here, and then subtracting out cost of goods sold, which is right here on the income statement to get your final amount of $360. And again, add all these up, you get $1,000, as you can see right here. And here are the final balance sheets, and you can see the differences between first in, first out, and last in, first out, and how it affects the earnings and how it affects everything right here, which would be a difference of $30 that you wouldn't have to pay taxes on. Now I'm going to get into the final statement, which is the cash flow statement. I'm going to take you through this bit by bit by bit. So here is our beginning balance sheet that we have from previous. And what I'm going to do is this is what is called a cash flow statement. Now, cash flow statements all look different. I don't have anything in here in regards to dividends and so forth and so on. But this is the basics of what a cash flow statement looks like and how it will affect your balance sheet. And cash flow statements are used, just like income statements are used to keep your earnings week ending straight, cash flow statements are used to keep your cash straight. So I'm going to skip the earnings here first, and I'm going to jump down here to accounts receivable collection, meaning that you receive $50 cash from a previous accounts receivable right here, which was $50 owed to you on credit. Well, that person paid you the full $50 or you processed a credit card or whatever. So what happens here? We're going to add $50 to cash, which I did, 915, and we're going to delete out the amount in accounts receivable. And because all the transactions were only done on the left side, and nothing really changed. We just moved this number from here up to there. Everything is still in balance. Then you see on the next screen, now we're going to take both an inventory investment, means so that we purchased $150 in additional inventory, and we subtracted out our rent for $240. I'm going to do this all in one fell swoop. What I did was I deleted $150 from cash, as you can see here, as well as deleted $240 from cash. So I added those two numbers together, deleted them from cash. And then I increased my inventory level right here from $165 to $315 by adding in $150, and that's where that is. And then I deleted $240, which was for my rent, from both my cash as well as my earnings week ending to get a final balance of $840. Here, I'm going to purchase a fixed asset. Whenever you purchase any fixed asset, all you do is delete the amount of the fixed asset, being $120, from your cash amount, as I did right here, and then put in the value of said fixed asset, which we're going to depreciate here in a couple slides. And then we come down here and we come to an accounts payable, which is a short term loan for $200. Whenever we do get this loan, all we're going to do is put $200 over here into accounts payable and then increase your cash amount by said $200. And then after you do that, you can now, or at least this is the way I'm demonstrating this, jump up into earnings, take the $600 that you have up here in net earnings because you subtracted out everything else here, and you want to add that $600 to both cash, which I did here, as well as to the earnings week ending. See, this went from $200 to $800. Whenever you balance everything out, it comes to $1,640. So that's a basic walkthrough of a cash flow statement and how it affects your overall balance sheet. And in regards to fixed asset, you have to understand the following. When you purchase a fixed asset, you decrease cash and create a fixed asset on your balance sheet. That's all you do. Whenever it comes to depreciation, which is the reduction of cost of a fixed asset over a period of time. Now, you depreciate an item because it either becomes useless because of wear and tear, or it just becomes useless because it's old technology. Either way, what I'm going to do is I purchased a $120 easel, and I'm going to depreciate that by $10 each month, and it will be fully depreciated within one year. So I'm going to take $10 off of the fixed asset on the left. If we jump over here, I'm going to take $10 off of here. 
and I'm going to subtract earnings week ending over here by $10 each month. So that is how you depreciate fixed assets. You take them out of earnings. You do not touch cash. So this will go down $10 every month, and this will go down $10 every month until this no longer exists. So was that easy to understand? Is there anything specifically I should go over? Again, leave comments below. I will answer any questions that you have. And if there's anything else you want me to cover in regards to financial statements or investing or whatever, I can provide my opinion. Remember, I'm not an accountant. I'm just a former stockbroker. But I'm willing to help, and I do have that knowledge. So hope this was helpful to you. And until next time.